Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is Delaney and this is part two of my eyeshadow collection and I am filming this the next day so hence the costume change, makeup change and everything. Completely fresh and new for today. Um, but yes, so this is part two of the collection and as I said previously in part one, if you haven't gone to see that, please go check it out. It, it, it should be already up by the time I'm posting this, so you can also check the link in the description of this video if you'd like to check out part one. But, um, so I have a little bit of a disclaimer for this one. Uh, in light of, in light of the drama <laughs> in the beauty community right now, things are going crazy right now. And you may not follow that, you may follow it, um, but there's a lot of different things coming out about different brands, owner, the owners of brands and, and just different things. And I just want to make a disclaimer that everything in this video, in my eyeshadow palette collection, this is all makeup that I have purchased already in the past. So this is stuff that has been in my collection now for a while. Um, so whatever you think of the people behind the brands, this video is not necessarily for that. This is just to showcase what palettes that I have in my collection and maybe what I think of the actual product itself. I will not be talking about what I think of individual brands in this. I will be talking about, however, the quality of the products that I have had, how much I use it, for example. Um, do I like the color story? Things like that. So. Please don't take me saying that I like a product to be that, you know, me siding with a brand. Just wanted that to be a disclaimer. All my opinions are for the product themselves and not the people behind the brands. So now that I've gotten that disclaimer out of the way, just to make sure everything's clear. Um, oh, also another disclaimer. Be obviously having these things in my collection means that I did like this brand. And you'll pro you could probably guess which brand it will be, because um, <laughs> I have a lot of them. I have a lot of palettes from this brand. I do not want to say that I'm completely done with this brand, but I also don't want to say that I will be purchasing stuff from this brand in the future. I honestly really don't know what I think right now, so <sighs> I don't know, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes in the future. Only time will tell. Who knows? But I just want to make sure that you know that I am talking about what I think of the quality of the products and not the people behind brands. So again, now that that disclaimer is out of the way, I will jump right into part two of my eyeshadow collection. Please remember to like and subscribe and possibly click on some other videos after this one's done if you like what I do. So yeah, I would love if you join down below and to my subscriber family. I am sitting at 11 subscribers right now and I'm so, so grateful for that number. And I really would love to actually interact with my subscribers. So if you want, leave a comment down below, maybe a palette that you saw that you really loved. Maybe what are your eyeshadow favorites? So maybe formula or palette, either one. I would love to get to know y'all and thank you for watching and let's jump right in. Alrighty guys, so I am currently sitting on the floor of my beauty room right now in front of my shelf. Whoop! <laughs> in front of my shelf and I am going to finish off with the eyeshadows that were actually in my drawer with the other palettes that I just didn't get to yesterday. And then obviously I will venture into this shelf which has a lot of other eyeshadow palettes in it and other little goodies. So yeah, let's get started. So first, this is the probably the newest thing in my collection. I got this from TJ Maxx. This is Kevin Aquan Jewel Pop Face and Eye Palette. And it has a lot of different shades in here. And this was significantly discounted. I think it's $59 of retail value. And I got it for $20. And I love it. Honestly, the $20, the eyeshadows I use but actually the face products I use more. Uh, the top two shades, Moonstone and Citrine, are the two eyeshadows that I use most out of this palette. I did include this in my eyeshadow palettes just because 
I've already done my face products and this is actually a newer item in my collection and it also includes eyeshadow so I wanted to show you all just so it is included in my collection even though I just got it <laughs> um, but even though I just got it about maybe a week or two ago actually it must have been a week because TJ Maxx just literally opened up again um, <laughs> yeah, I'm in the state of Virginia so TJ Maxx has just recently opened up for us but comes with the sculpting powder and the blush and then eyeshadows and I'm really enjoying this formula so love this. I have actually really been loving pretty much every Kevin Aquan product that I've ever tried so I'm very happy with this. If you see this at TJ Maxx I would highly recommend especially for that $20 price tag. The $59 price tag is a little bit much. I think that's too expensive for what this is but uh, especially for the face products it's definitely worth it and you get a good amount in the pans. Um, also, the citrine shade is very sparkly, very pretty, and I love this shade to set the lid and also to set underneath the eyes sometimes. If I'm in a pinch, I can use this palette when I'm traveling, which I do really enjoy. So, definitely recommend that one. Even though it's not a true eyeshadow palette, it still kind of counts. If you just, uh, you know, cover that. <laughs> Alright, next is this... Okay, so this is the Too Faced Natural Matte Palette, and we got this in a BoxyCharm, and I've only truthfully used it maybe twice so far. Uh, it's not my favorite palette by Too Faced. I don't have too, too many palettes that I've actually purchased uh, myself from Too Faced, so this one I said was in a BoxyCharm. Um, it's all matte, as, as you could probably tell by the name of it. It has this really pretty imprint, kind of like lace imprint in the shadows, and I like it. I don't think it would really work for deeper skin tones though, because it's really hard to build up on my skin, and I'm very pale. <laughs> so I can only imagine how hard it would be to build up to the actual pigment you'd want on deeper skin tones, but let me know down in the comments if you have a deeper skin tone than me. Uh, if you've tried this palette, how it works. It's not really my favorite. It also kind of smells like powder. <laughs> I don't know how to explain that other than powder. Um, almost like baby powder-ish kind of smell, but sweeter. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe not. But it definitely has a scent to it, and it's not my favorite scent, so I don't really reach into this a lot. Also, it has this weird, like, raised packaging, and it kind of makes it hard to store, so... Not my favorite, but I keep it in the pal in the collection anyways, but who knows, I'm not sure if it'll survive the next declutter. <sighs> All right, next up, this palette is one of the few Tarte palettes that I own. It might, it might be the only Tarte eyeshadow that I own. It has this cool holographic-y, well, not really holographic, but when you move it, it changes and it has like a splatter paint design on it. This is the TARDIS Pro Remix palette. I got this at Ulta, um, one of my first purchases. So this was after the James Charles, or maybe before, actually. I might have gotten this before the James Charles palette. Um, because, oh yes, yeah, so I got this actually before the James Charles palette at Ulta because I went in there looking for the James Charles palette. And then I saw this one, and the James Charles one was out of stock at that moment. And I saw this one and they really, really loved it because of the shimmer shades. So this palette is mostly shimmer, which I liked at the time, but not as much now. So there are only two matte shades in here, wall art and mixed media. And then every other shade in here is shimmer. And at the time, I thought it was really amazing. Um, but just now it's not... Well, wow, that made a difference. So it punches a little bit more when you take that plastic off, but it's still not as bright as I would hope it to be, and there's not that much I feel like I can do with it. There's a lot of these grayer tones in there. This shade is pretty unique, though. It's like a grayish to a blue to a brown. It's, an, it's a unique shade. Um, but other than that, I don't get too much use out of this. So, yeah, it's here but it's not my fave. I did see that some people got this palette in a boxy Lux, so let me know if you had this and let me know what you think. All right, now, let's see. 
we're starting to get into the palettes that I use more often. This next palette is by a brand that I don't see really ever being talked about in any kind of YouTube videos that I've watched. Um, they actually do have a store in my hometown and I actually have been to it a couple times, but mostly I have just gotten some of these from my grandmother, which I know, whatever, but um, she doesn't wear eyeshadow really that much. And so she thought that I might use it because she knows I like makeup and I actually really enjoy that. So this is by the brand Merle Norman. I actually have a couple of their face products and I've tried their mascara. Um, they give a lot of free gifts with purchase. Uh, so she actually gives the little sample size free things to me to try. And a couple of their things are really nice. I really like their blush. I have a little baby like about this big of blush and it's really nice. This one is an eyeshadow palette. It's actually a glitter palette. Let's see, pro glitter eye palette. But I would not consider this a pressed glitter. It's more of a shimmer eyeshadow formula. So very sparkly, very cute. It comes with one of these things, which is really funny because I don't, eyeshadow palettes rarely come with this anymore, but a lot of the older palettes do, which is really funny. I've never actually applied eyeshadow with that, I don't think. Oh wow, you can see my ring sparkling. <laughs> but yes, so we have four different shades of glitter in here. Some are more duochrome, like this one kind of has a purpley to blue shift. This one has a mint green to kind of a pinky, but the glitter itself is what's shifting, not the shade. But yeah, so sometime I will probably do some swatches of this. They're more topper-like shades. Uh, they're not like super pigmented on their own, but they're really pretty and I've enjoyed using them. So yeah, there's that one. Some of their products actually probably deserve a little bit more hype. Um, I'm not sure how big this brand is actually, but I never really see people talking about them. So maybe I can showcase a little bit more of their stuff and see what happens. All right, so now we're gonna get into another BoxyCharm um, eyeshadow palette. So we got this Smashbox, um, what is it called? Photo Studio? Photo Edit. Photo Edit Eyeshadow Trio in holy crop. So this is made to look like a camera lens. And I like it, but it's not my fave. It's, it's an okay formula. Um, it comes with this like satiny shade, a matte shade, and then a shimmery satinish shade. The shimmer doesn't have enough punch for me, and the satin is just kind of weird to me. Because I like, I like this, if this color was a matte shadow, I would like this a lot better, but I don't know. It's just not my favorite. I mean, it's okay. That's all I have to say about it. This is the only Smashbox, um, I think this is the only Smashbox product that I have right now. I've tried their primers before, but definitely my only Smashbox eyeshadow palette okay so I'm gonna talk about this one really really quick this one wasn't too this was not worth the money to me it was okay it has two mattes and three shimmers and the shimmer shades are just kind of lackluster for me the mattes are nice and soft and buildable but I think this was like $25 and I I would rather spend $25 on the Natasha Denona mini palettes. The brush is kind of useless to me, but I would be interested in trying Lorac shadows. I've heard good things about them, but maybe just not this palette, maybe um, one of the pro palettes. But yeah, that's all I have to say about that one. <sighs> okay, so now we're starting to get into the more luxe, well, I mean all of them were kind of luxe, but the more well-known brands. Not that Tarte and Too Faced and Kevin Aquan aren't well known, but the palettes that a lot of people have heard of. Um, okay, so let me take this one out real quick, just because it's the same brand. So we're gonna start with the Huda. These are the Huda palettes that I have. So I have the Rose Gold palette remastered, I have the Mauve Obsessions, the Emerald Obsessions, and the Nude Light. Um, out of all three, I use the mauve and the nude most often. They're really beautiful. Packaging is great. Um, I love how compact these are. 
especially the mauve one. This one's so good to take traveling. I love the shimmer shades. The matte shades are really nice. It includes that light shade so I can set my lid and blend other shadows out. So this one is a yes for me. I like, I love that one. The Emerald Obsessions. My birthstone is emerald, so I kind of had to get it. Um, but I don't use it too, too often. I will use the shimmer shades out of this though. And occasionally this greenish gold shade at the bottom. Love that, but the, the bluish green, I'm not, I don't use that too, too often, but the shimmers I love. And the green tones, I have green eyes, so it really makes them pop. So I do use this, just not as much as the mauve one. And then, let's see. <clears throat> so this is the nude light palette, just to open it up to show you. It's, I fell in love with this at the store at the store at Sephora so I got this for Christmas last year I believe and it is beautiful these glitter shades spoke to me and the mattes are super pretty super light um I almost wish I got the medium one though because these are super hard to build up the matte shades are beautiful but it takes forever to get the pigment that you really want so but the shimmers are out of this world. Love them. I wouldn't. I would not say that they are the best shimmers I've ever had. Um, they they do not even compare to Kaleidos and Pat McGrath, and but they do have a nice unique style to them, and they're very glittery, which I do appreciate. They're just not as creamy as I would want. But the look on the eyes is stunning. I really like this, but I almost wish that I could try the medium. So, but I still really do get use out of this one. The Rose Gold Remastered, I got this on sale at Sephora and I wish I used it more, but I don't. So I use these shimmer shades mostly, like this pink diamond shade I've used a lot. And then this bubbly shade and the moon dust I've used a lot. But other than that, I really don't touch this palette. But yeah, it's pretty. Um, <laughs> Huda doesn't have my favorite, favorite formula in the world. So that's why I don't reach into that super, super often. And if I do, I reach into the mini palettes just because it's easier to travel. But yeah, I do enjoy those palettes though. All right, so I'm gonna get, let's see. Okay, up next is Kaja Beauty. This is the only Kaja Beauty product, eyeshadow product that I have. Um, it's a little bento box and it is in Glowing Guava. I actually really do love these uh, bento boxes. They're a little on the expensive side though. I think they're $21 for three shades, which is a lot because <laughs> even the Natasha Denona mini palettes are $25 and you get five shades out of them. Um, but I really do like the, it comes with a little mirror. I don't ever use it, but it does come with one. Um, it comes with two mattes and a shimmer shade. So here's the shimmer shade in the middle and then on the bottom you have the other darker matte shade and it's a nice formula and you can do an eye look with just this uh, little bento box which I do enjoy for traveling but not my f I wish hmm, I almost wish it had five shades in here just for a little bit more versatility but it's super super small I mean this is my hand and this is the bento box I do enjoy that for traveling and it's really cute, I must say. I love the packaging. I love that it's stacked. It just feels like a toy. I kind of like it, but yeah, the formula is really good. Not my favorite, favorite formula, but one that I do enjoy. We are going to move on to my shelf now. So I took this out of the shelf just because I didn't want to be reaching all the way back into it. These are the Anastasia Beverly Hills palettes that I own. So we're gonna start with these. Also this drawer came with these two palettes. So I, I use it, <laughs> I love it for a display piece. It's just so glittery and beautiful. So I'm really happy that I got it bundled together so I could get this drawer. <sighs> okay, let's start with my all time favorite Anastasia palette, the Sultry palette. This packaging, I wish she would do it again. Um, I think the Ambrisi palette has similar packaging, just in pink glitter, but it's a little longer than these palettes. Um, and I also don't really, I don't really know of Ambrisi but that much. And the palette was a little on the expensive side, so I just did not go ahead and grab that. 
but this palette is I got this for Christmas I think two years ago has it been that long oh my gosh I think it was two years ago now and I have used it so so much I mean you can see the indents in most of the shimmers you can definitely see the, the fingerprints in these and then the mattes I surprised I have used it a lot I'm surprised I haven't hit pan on this fresh shade or this twig shade I use both of those a lot and then I darken it up with dystopian and sometimes if I'm looking for the warmer side I'll go with birch and then the black I love for a nice smoky look uh, these three shades make a beautiful eye look as well as just all of these the shimmer shades are just so good in this palette and it's clearly super super dirty and you, you could probably see how much I've used this but I love this and not getting rid of it if I can repurchase it after um, these shades are done and it's old I might actually repurchase it because I can't imagine not having it <laughs> but I think it was limited edition so hopefully I could find one but so beautiful I mean look at that and I love that the glitter doesn't come off on your hands. This glitter is from the shadows themselves. It's not the chunky glitter, but yeah, it doesn't come off on your hands when you do it, so. This one, on the other hand, glitter does come off. But it's also a display piece, so I don't really care that much about that. Um, okay, so next is the Norvina palette. I'm actually kind of doing this in the order that I got these, which is funny. Um, so this is the Norvina palette. I kept it clean just because I hate when palettes get super dirty. Um, this one I have used, but just not nearly as much as Sultry. It's, this is probably my second least used palette. Does that make sense? I don't know. But I love the shimmer shades in here again. The Wild Child and Celestial are beautiful. The Rose Gold is actually so, so pretty. They're super glittery and intense, and I love that. Also, Dazzling is really gorgeous. Um, also, Dreamer is so pretty, but I mean, yeah, I mean, I like this formula, so I really enjoyed this palette. Just the color scheme is not my absolute favorite. I wish that this Soul shade worked out better on my eyes. I didn't really love it. Uh, this Love shade is nice, but also a little bit trouble with it. I don't know, maybe it was just my eyes the day that I was doing it but I found that this didn't work as well for me as sultry but still a beautiful palette <sighs> all right up next is Riviera and this I did get it in this order even though this one I think well maybe it came out after Norvina I think it did yeah because this is their first like colorful palette that they came out with this was before all the Norvina uh, palettes started coming out. I got this at TJ Maxx for $20 and I'm glad I got it on sale because it's not my most loved palette in the world but I do use, use it occasionally. I need to try to use it a little bit more but it's just not something I reach into all the time. Um, I can't tell you the last time I reached into it honestly so I am really glad that I got it on a discount but yeah it's pretty. Not my fave but it's pretty. I love the packaging though. Super kind of nautical and yeah. It's opening up drawer number one. You can probably guess what these are. This is the Soft Glam palette by Anastasia. And here is the color scheme inside. I love this palette so much. I, I actually do reach into this a lot. If I'm looking for something super easy, this is it. I mean, it's gorgeous. It's really easy to get a look out of. I was going to use this for my friend's wedding, but she ended up, because of COVID-19, having to, you know, get married a little sooner than she expected and live stream it. So hopefully I'll be able to do her makeup for her reception that'll be in the fall. And I'll probably use this palette just because it is the perfect natural glam moment. Um, it's not like super glittery, but it's just nice soft glam, which, hence the name <laughs> but yeah it is beautiful it's natural looking on the eyes and the mattes blend super super well there's honestly a reason that a lot of people have raved about this and I agree wholeheartedly with that so if if you can get 
any Anastasia palette, I would say get the Sultry if you want uh, cooler tones and get the Soft Glam if you want warmer tones. Definitely, definitely recommend. And then last but not least for Anastasia, we have the Modern Renaissance palette. Uh, the Soft Glam had this fabric kind of outside too. I love the feel of it, but it gets dirty really easily, so I've had to like actively try to keep this clean. But this is more on the pinkier side. It's reading a little bit brighter on camera than it actually is. So this pink is not very hot pink in real life. It's kind of muted and dulled down just a tad. But this one fresco shade is so pretty. It's this beautiful light pink, great transition. Ugh. great transition shade i do wish it had more shimmers in it though it only has these shimmers here and this one's kind of like a satiny shade not really shimmery shimmery i wish it had like a glitter shade like in the sultry palette but it's still beautiful and yeah i love it just don't get as much of a use out of it as i do the soft glam and as i do of the as i do from the sultry palette all right, so that is all the Anastasia Beverly Hills uh, eyeshadow palettes that I have. So I'm gonna put that back on the shelf. <clears throat> all right, there we go. And there's no particular order to these shelves right now. I just kind of put them, um, I just kind of put things where, in kind of the order I grab them in. I might change the order around of these cubes. This one's just a piece of foam. I need to do something with that. Um, obviously, I don't know what to put in these bottom ones, so still a work in progress, but all right. So this was the box the Kaleidos ones came in, and I kept it because it's a beautiful box, and then I put the Kaleidos palettes here just lined up, but because I wanted to keep it separate from part one and part two, I put these palettes over behind me on my vanity, just so I don't accidentally go over them again. Um. Okay, so over here, we have the Tati Beauty palette. It's I keep it in the sleeve just to keep it from getting too dirty, which, which honestly didn't work out too well because it's still dirty. <laughs> it has this nice soft matte kind of touch to it. And I really do love that. It feels very luxurious, it's very heavy. This is volume one. Um, Tati Beauty, I, I think they're coming out with new palettes at some point because why have a volume one without more in the plan? But anyway, not talking about that. So here is the color scheme on the inside. <clears throat> this is such a unique palette because it does have the pressed glitter shades, but also it has the same colors but going up four different shades, well, they're, let's say one, two, three, four, five, six different shades, but they have four different finishes for each of those shades. So you have your glitter and then your metallic, your sequin and matte. As you can see, I've dipped into this um, memory matte shade so often, it blends out so well. If you are afraid of black eyeshadow, because you think you're gonna just add too much by accident, this is the one for you. It builds super, super nicely. It looks very soft. It's very pigmented. You can make it very, very pigmented and you can build it up or you can just kind of add it little by little and make it look super, super beautiful. Um, but these sequin shades, actually, I, I like them more than I thought I would. I was kind of confused as to why a matte shadow would have glitter in it. Um, I'd seen a couple ColourPop ones that had that kind of deal, but let me just say, this one right here, the, ooh, let me find it, Aura, it has a pink glitter in this creamy kind of white matte shade. It's super unique. Let's see, I, I have to swatch it for you because that's the only way it does it justice. All right. You see that? I mean, the glitter transfers into the shadow and it's just so beautiful. <laughs> uh, this on the lid is actually really great, but I would stamp this and see how pigmented that is right off the bat. I mean, I just pressed in once and that's the pigment and the glitter comes right with it. Um, so, 
so I put it right on the back of my hand. If you stamp it, the glitter will stay with the shadow, but if you kind of like pull on it, the glitter goes away. So I would recommend if you want that glitter to stay, just press and stamp it on your lid. Um, but this is such a beautiful shadow. This formula is beautiful if you have, I don't want to say wrinkles, but folds, more folds in your eyes, I guess. More mature lids maybe might be a good way to put it. Um, it looks very airbrushed on the eyes. It kind of smooths everything out. It's a beautiful formula, definitely recommend. And these pressed glitters are something else. I mean, they're probably one of the best pressed glitter shades, not shades, formulas that I've ever tried. They really do transfer right onto your lid and very minimally stick to your fingers. Yeah, these pressed glitters are beautiful and just awesome. I will say the metallic shades are not my favorite. I don't think that they add enough as a metallic shade, but if you want something more subtle, it's great. But the sequin, the matte, and the glitter shades make this palette well worth the money. Also, I like that it's neutral, all these neutral colors. So you can, if you're gonna get one palette in your collection, this is a great one to have, just because it has so many of those staple colors that you'll use every single day. So this one's a definite yes. Next up, we have an iconic London palette. It is the Day to Slay eyeshadow palette. And we got this in a boxy charm, and I'm not, I think it was the premium, but I could be wrong. But this has some beautiful neutral shades in here. The shimmers are okay, not my favorite. Uh, the mattes are okay, not my favorite, but they are pretty. So yeah, overall, it's really bulky, which I don't like. I wish it was just a slimmer uh, palette, but it's okay. That's all I really have to say about it. I've only used it a couple times. I did get it in a boxy charm, so I did not pay full price for it, thankfully. But if you're gonna get go, yeah. If you're gonna buy anything from Iconic London, I don't know if this should be it. I really do like their um, their luminizer, and then like the liquid glow drops, and I also really do like uh, their lip gloss. Mm, let's see, they have a couple of other things that are really beautiful. I really want to try their powder face products. Also their uh, cream blush looks really pretty, so I maybe wouldn't go for this, but Iconic London has some beautiful products. <sighs> okay, so up next we have a palette hidden in here. Which one is it? Huh, I don't know. Which one is it? It is this one, Little Briar Rose. So I absolutely love the aesthetics of this palette, that it's a book and it has the pages and it also is Little Briar Rose, which Aurora is one of my favorite uh, Disney princesses. So when we got this in a boxy charm, I was ecstatic because ob obviously it's super cute. <laughs> but here's the color story on the inside. You have your pinks and blues, obviously, because you know her dress changes from pink to blue. <laughs> But the shimmer shades are really beautiful. The matte shades actually blend out really beautifully. I don't use this too much only because it's always on my shelf as a display because I absolutely love how it looks. Um, I really want to try to dip into this more, but I just can't seem to go grab it off my shelf because it just is so pretty sitting up there. <sighs> up next, we're gonna go over my Too Faced palettes. All right, so I have the chocolate gold palette, I have the white chocolate bar, and then the regular original chocolate bar. Now this original chocolate bar, I did purchase myself a long, long time ago, and I have used it so much. I've hit pan on four different shades in this palette, and I've made a significant indent in some of the shimmer shades, but this is well loved, and it smells so yummy. It's still really beautiful. I just don't reach into it a lot. I reach into Sultry more than this one now, but this was before I had gotten Sultry. It's really gorgeous, and I do occasionally still go into it, but not as much anymore. I do love that it looks like chocolate. It's super cute. Um, the white chocolate bar I was given by a friend. She was getting rid of different palettes, and my makeup collection was very small at the time, so I took this off her hands, 
and it's pretty it's just I don't use it too too often um, just the color scheme is not exactly what I go for all the time but it's cute packaging and I mean like this shade is really beautiful the um, indulge shade is really beautiful I just don't dip into it as much as I should I, I probably should dip into it a little more again it smells like the chocolate bar it smells beautiful so that one's nice and then the chocolate gold palette, I got this from a friend as well. She was getting rid of it. And so I took it off her hands just because I knew I had the other chocolate bars. So I kind of wanted this one as well. This one is mostly shimmer shades, which is different. Uh, that's probably why I don't reach into it as much. I need to stop buying palettes that are all shimmers. This has four mattes in it and then the rest are shimmer. And they're pretty shimmers. They're just not the kind of shimmers that I personally want. I want something super glittery, not just necessarily shiny. I want it glitter in the shimmer shade. Um, so it's pretty, just not exactly what I want, but it is beautiful and I have used it a couple times and I love the packaging. I love that gold drip. Too Faced doesn't necessarily have my favorite formula of all time, but their packaging is always on point. Um, okay, so. This one I also got from a friend who was decluttering and either she had an extra one of these or she was getting rid of this because she hadn't touched it in a long time. But either way, I am very happy with this palette. Having green eyes, this palette is so stunning. So these mauve cherry tones are beautiful with green eyes. I just, uh, I love this. I dip into it a lot. Um, especially these two shades here and then darken up with this one or sometimes this one if I want to go a little bit lighter. These shimmer shades in here are not my favorite. I do not dip in here for the shimmer shades. I dip in here for the mattes. It's a beautiful palette. I really enjoy it. It's the only Urban Decay eyeshadow palette I have. Yes, I believe so. This is the only Urban Decay eyeshadow palette I have and I like it. I just don't love it. If I'm going to be purchasing a palette, this formula is not my absolute favorite, but this color scheme and everything, the cherry theme, love it. So I'm glad I have it in my collection, but I'm not sure if I would repurchase it. Let's start with the JSC, Jeffree Star Cosmetics um, palettes that I have. So I do have quite a few of them. So we're gonna start with Blood Sugar. This one I got at a, during a restock, so it's really not that old. It's kind of newer in my collection. Um, I must say that the packaging on these palettes is really beautiful. It's definitely unique. I don't have anything in my collection that even comes close to this, other than obviously JSC stuff. But here is the uh, color story inside. The formula is beautiful. The mattes are awesome. The neutrals in this palette are a little bit lackluster for me, not my favorite, but the, it, it is an early palette from JSC, so he did improve his formula for the shimmers later on, but the matte formula is awesome. And if you're doing like any kind of Instagram colorful look, these are beautiful. He has some very unique shades in his palettes and they all look just, they're, they're really unique and beautiful, I must say. I mean, it's hard to argue with the quality and then this is my most unique palette that i have in my collection the alien palette it just looks like an alien head it has these 3d little bubble things for the eyes and it flips up like this and then you have the color scheme on the inside i love the green shades i love that phone home shade it's like a pur uh, pinky purple mauve shade um, probe is a beautiful bluish black kind of duochrome -y kind of shade um, and then Abduction is very unique, kind of a neon green color. And then Alien is a beautiful lime green shimmer. <sighs> They're just so unique. And Pluto is a great highlight. It's beautiful. Um, I just love the shape of it. Yep, whatever. I don't know what I can say about it, but it, I got that from Poshmark, I believe. Yes, because it was discontinued, so I couldn't buy it from the JSC site, so I did buy it from someone who was selling it. So I'm glad I got to give some money to another person and give the palette a new home and get some use out of it, so. Next up is the Blue Blood palette. 
This is such a unique palette because I don't have very many palettes in my collection that are mostly blue. Blue is a very rare shade to find in my collection. Uh, this was definitely the first palette that kind of introduced me into the blue eyeshadow game. And I actually really do love blue eyeshadow. Um, it's not something I wear every single day, but it really is gorgeous. And they blend out super beautifully. Ocean Ice is a very pretty glittery shade. Uh, it's not my favorite formula because it's a little bit chunkier, but Entitled is beautiful. Um, this Cullinan shade is super like, oh, it's it's beautiful. It's beautiful as an inner corner highlight and just a highlighter in general. Also, this navy shade, these two navy shades right here are very unique in my collection and they blend beautifully. So this Blue Monday shade is kind of not really that same color on the eyes, but it is a lot brighter. Um, so that's a definitely a unique shade. And then you have your neutrals to kind of work with the blue shades but you can make a lot of cute looks out of this palette. And I love the kind of coffin look that this palette has and the clasp on it. JSC really does put a lot into their packaging and it shows. So I am very appreciative of that. It's a beautiful palette. All right, next up is the mini breaker. I got this in a mystery box. This one I use a ton. It's a weird combination of colors that you probably wouldn't think like, oh, that could be an everyday palette. Well, it's really not, <laughs> but it actually has turned into an everyday palette for me. This kind of mustardy shade, double scoop, and this shimmer shade are gorgeous together. Uh, darken it up with hot fudge. Also taking this, let's see, no wait. Also using bubble gum and foreplay. <laughs> and then darkening up with purple punch and then giving it this um, duochrome shimmer on top. It's just super beautiful. It's a beautiful bluish purple duochrome shade and I, I just love it. It actually goes really well together. Purple and orange is a beautiful combination to me and yeah, just beautiful. All right, and then this is the Big Mama. I, this is probably the JSC palette that I get the most use out of. It, okay, this is the Jawbreaker palette, and it has so many different colors in it. This is the, the quintessential rainbow palette, and it has a beautiful mix of shimmers and mattes, and I just, I really love it. I really do. The matte shadows blend out beautifully. The shimmers are beautiful. I will say that they're not very glittery shimmer shades in here. They're kind of similar to the Blood Sugar palette, where the shimmers are more metallic and not as much glitter, but very very beautiful and I've gotten a lot of use out of this palette and I love the pattern on it that little jawbreaker kind of splatter painted look to it very cohesive very beautiful it was a beautiful collection and again I just want to reiterate the disclaimer in the beginning I've had these palettes for a while now. I am not endorsing the brand owner. I am just talking about the palettes that I have in my collection and what I thought of the products. So don't come for me. <clears throat> I'm glad I reiterated that because now we're probably to our most controversial palette <laughs> and collection. So this is the palette with Shane Dawson, the JSC and Shane Dawson collaboration. This is the Conspiracy palette and the Mini Controversy as well as the Gloss. I know that's not an eyeshadow palette, but I have them together just because of the same collection. So let me open up to show you. So this is the front of the Conspiracy palette. Very unique, kind of goes with the um, Blood Sugar and Blue Blood palette. Here is the inside of the palette. It really does have some beautiful shades inside. I actually do get pretty good use out of this palette. It's definitely unique and the formula is really good. And that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> so the quality of the product is actually really good. And now for the mini controversy, I know there's another mini controversy with a, the green shade instead of diet root beer um i do love i do really like the green shade 
but I'm glad I have this version because it has more transition shades and I, I really like the shade Diet Root Beer. Um, yeah, so this is a pretty palette. I do not get as much use out of this one as I do out of the mini, uh, mini breaker palette, but it's a cute palette and yeah, that's that. And I do love that rainbow kind of reflectiveness of the packaging. And now the last of the Jeffree Star palettes and the most recent other than uh, the cremated palette. I did not purchase the cremated palette. Um, I don't know if I will. Not sure what the future holds for that. There's just a lot surrounding that. <laughs> um, but so this is the Bloodlust palette. And it's, I love the velvet. It's very unique and purple. I was super excited when I found out he was doing a purple palette. Um, here's the inside. You can tell me if you thought this was a purple palette. Um, a lot of people were saying it was more pink, which I think it's kind of half and half. Um, I think a few more purple shades would be nice, but it is a beautiful palette. And it's very versatile because it's not just all different gradients of purple. So I will give him that. Um, it's a beautiful palette. <laughs> Same formula as the others um, for the mattes. And then you have the two shades here that are really glittery. They're more topper shades than um, metallic. Beauty Sleep is really beautiful and Wet Jewel is also really beautiful. Sworn Enemy is a gold greenish shade and it's, it's very pretty. And then the um, Executioner shade is a beautiful unique shade of purple. It's like black with purple glitter in it very beautiful and it's super shiny yeah so it's very pretty and then the palette it's very unique in shape and so that is all of the JSC palettes that I have and now for the final two eyeshadow palettes in my collection as of today these are also my more expensive palettes so I have two palettes here from Pat McGrath. This is the Mothership 5 palette, Divine, what is it? Mothership 5 palette, I think it's Bronze Seduction or something like that. I think it's Bronze Seduction. Yeah, I don't know why it doesn't say the full name of the palette on here. It just says Mothership 5 on it. So that's what I'm gonna call it. But this is a little bit dusty, but <laughs> It's mostly because it's so pretty, I almost don't want to touch it. Um, but here she is. It has this gold plated back to it, as all of the Pat McGrath palettes do. Then you have the logo here. Here she is. You have one, two, three mattes and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven shimmers. These shimmers here are probably the most unique in my collection. This is more of a glitter. Um, but it's it's duochrome kind of glitter and this one's just a straight up duochrome that's super metallic and it's super unique it just really is a transformative shade I mean that's like what this palette is Pat McGrath shimmer shades are just amazing the matte shades are good not the best but they're good but the shimmer shades are really what you're paying for when you get a Pat McGrath palette also just the luxury um, packaging as well. It's just kind of uh, a whole experience, you know? Um, but yeah, so I really do love this palette. I've gotten a lot of use out of it, especially with these two shades. I will dip into this a lot just for those two shades. Beautiful. And now I have, what is this called? The Blitz Astral Quad in Nocturnal Nirvana. And this is the outer packaging little box. I do keep these just because they're unique to every palette and otherwise they just look like this and you can't tell them all apart. Um, it has the gold plated back, just like the other one. But then this one is only four shades. This one I use most. This is probably my most used Pat McGrath one. Even though the other one is more neutral, this one is just, this green shade here, I use the most. That's what I dip into this for most. The gold is also really beautiful and glittery. And this blue shade is so unique, super, super sparkly, kind of this bluish green glittery shade. And then this duochromy green. I love both of them. They're so beautiful. Quality is beautiful, really great. I got this one for a Christmas gift and I'm so glad I have it. 
it's an expensive palette, but at least it gets a lot of good use and I love it. So I really enjoy having this in my collection. You can kind of see in the reflection what the other color is. I mean, that's kind of cool. So you can see it kind of is a duochrome shade. This color right here. Yeah, you can see it, me pointing to it. It's kind of a purple. It's a green to a purple. So yeah, that's really beautiful. And that's it. So I think we're done. I think that's all my palettes. All right, everyone. So that concludes my eyeshadow collection. Um, all right, everyone. So I tallied up how many eyeshadow palettes I have and the grand total is 74, <laughs> which is actually insane. I had no idea that I have that high of a number of palettes. I know other people probably have more than that, but to me, it seems like a lot. Probably to any sane person, it could seem like a lot of eyeshadow. Um, just putting that into perspective, I'm now thinking of how much I actually have of makeup products in general. I don't even want to tally that up. 74 eyeshadow palettes is a whole lot. <laughs> but I do kind of keep in mind that I have had BoxyCharm for two years now, and I did get a lot of palettes through BoxyCharm. So it's not like I paid retail price for everything. But, and then of course there were sales at certain times. So I didn't always pay retail price for everything. So I do want to keep that in mind. And I do want to show, you know, I'm not just dropping thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars at one time and bulking up my collection. Um, but 74 palettes is still a whole lot. And I've definitely started becoming more particular in what palettes I buy. I really have to want a palette super, super bad and justify it in my collection before I buy it. As I said before, I think I bought, I think the newest thing I bought was from TJ Maxx. I have gotten a lot of different things from TJ Maxx as well. So keep that in mind. Um, but yeah, a lot of the things in my collection still spark joy. So yeah, I will be doing a declutter after all the makeup collection is done. I think I've mentioned that in different videos before, but I just wanted to reiterate, this is just, you know, the collection video, um, but I will be going through my entire collection and getting rid of stuff that I don't use, don't love anymore, etc., etc. So, 74 palettes, that's a lot. <laughs> if you made it through this video, and and part one thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it please stay safe and happy and healthy out there uh try not to think about the drama that's going on right now as much um it, it gets a lot so please try to do something for you self-care um go hug a family member or if you don't live with them and you're quarantined and trying to save distance just shoot them a text message, call them, whatever. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoy this video. Please do check out part one if you have not seen part one already. Also, I have listed my other makeup collection videos in the description box of this video. Also, I have a playlist for my makeup collection videos. And yeah, just check out any other videos I made. If you like me, if you like what I do, go check them out. <laughs> please, please, please like and subscribe. I've noticed a lot of viewers of my videos are not subscribed so please subscribe if you like what i do and you like my videos um but that's it so thank you again for watching and i hope you all have a fabulous day all right bye guys